Mrs. ABC. Um, she is twenty four years old, female, graduated B Com, and occupied as a home worker, uh, uh, homemaker. Her husband, Mr. ABC, of age twenty eight years, old male. He has graduated B Com and is working as an accountant. They are Hindu by religion. They are resided at Karwar, Kajubag. They belong to the socio economic status of class two, according to modified B T Prasad's classification. Uh, Mrs. A B C is a die card holder. Uh, she was admitted to our hospital at ninth April, twenty twenty two, and she was examined on tenth April, twenty twenty two. Her last menstrual period was third July, twenty twenty one, and her expected date of delivery is ten April, twenty twenty two. Her period of gestation is forty weeks. Her obstetric score is G one. She is primary gravida. Okay, just just uh, we'll start with the very basics. Um, uh, just tell me what is uh, what is gravida and what is para. So this is uh, for the benefit of those who are um, junior to you and who are just entering clinical um, obstetrics. What is gravida? What is para? Uh, gravida is uh, um, It's okay. Don't be nervous. It's okay. Gravida is a event. So when we say obstetric score, in obstetric score we use different uh, abbreviations. One is G, one is P. So I'm just asking, what is G? Gravida, and what? When do we use P? That is para. Gravida is the state of pregnancy that yeah. is past or a present event of a pregnancy where outcome is not known. Um, para is a um, past event of a pregnancy. Well, after the viability period. Okay, so a woman who is uh, pregnant is basically gravida, and the total number of pregnancies is the gravidity. All right, irrespective of as you said the outcome. And para is those number of pregnancies that have crossed the period of viability, excluding the present pregnancy. So all past pregnancies are para, and gravida includes the present pregnancy and also includes all the past pregnancies irrespective of the outcome good okay continue uh, mr abc is a book case of primary gravida with 40 weeks of gestation uh, she was uh, 40 weeks of uh, amenorrhea she is admitted for safe confinement a uh, history of present pregnancy first trimester it is a con spontaneous conception pregnancy was diagnosed by urine pregnancy test and was confirmed at the district hospital karwar at 8 weeks a uh, tt inj injection was given at 12 weeks that is first dose of tt injection and folic acid supplements were given um, a dating scan and nt scan were done dating scan was done at 8 weeks and nt scan was done at 12 weeks okay wait i'll stop you here tell me what do you mean by uh, dating scan and what do you mean by nt scan can you tell me the importance of dating scan uh, uh dating scan is a viability scan uh, it is done from what uh, it is done so dating scan is different from viability scan what is the difference Uh, dating dating scan is made to confirm the pregnancy and uh, viability. So why is it called dating then? Ma'am, expected date of delivery. Uh, how can how be... how do we how do we see the expected date of delivery from an a scan at eight weeks? What do we see on the ultrasound at eight weeks? What will we see on the ultrasound? Um, uh, there will be a. of ring formation and also uh, the fetal heart sounds will be visible and okay but how do we do the dating then so the dating when we do a scan at 8 weeks we will see the fetus we will see the what is called the fetal pole and we will see the cardiac activity also so how do we measure the fetal pole how do we measure the fetal pole you know the parameter we take it is called the 
it is called the crown rump length that is the crl crm yes you must have heard of the crl so the crl is what is used to calculate the period of gestation okay and at 8 weeks the crl should correspond to whatever measurement we get in centimeter it is converted to period of gestation by the software in the machine and that should correspond to 8 weeks should correspond to 8 weeks in the first trimester the disparity should be less than 5 days okay so if suppose she comes at 8 weeks and the scan showed a crl of 9 weeks okay so that means there is a disparity of 7 days so that means there is some problem in her dating okay so then we should go back to the history and ask what or should we ask in the history for dating whether she has uh, um forgotten her last menstrual period so you should you should ask her if she is sure of her last menstrual period what else can affect the dating um as you said that uh, gap of yes or this there's a disparity so we should need to be sure of the dating what other factors in her history can affect the dating um one is all is sure Huh? Tell me. If she is oligohydramnia, like no, 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 no. The... We are going back in her history. She, her LMP, she should be sure of. What else? Her previous menstrual cycles previous. should be regular. Regular. Yes. If they are irregular, that means ovulation may not have occurred on the fourteenth day. So that will change her dating. so we have to ask the history of regular menstrual cycles and we have to confirm her lmp if the dating scan shows a disparity and the second scan you said 12 weeks is nt scan what is nt scan many people don't know what an nt scan is what does nt stand for so patient no patient okay it's okay patient told you nt scan no ma'am actually okay. uh, So she NT scans. Two scans were done. Okay, so we do an. You are correct. NT scan is done between eleven to fourteen weeks. But what is an NT scan? NT stands for nuchal translucency. Okay, which is what is nuchal? Nuchal means the neck. Translucency means the tissue at the back of the neck that is measured of the fetus. What will that tell us? Why is it done? We do it routinely for all, for all. Um, uh, um, uh, uh, for uh, detecting neural tube defects. one is neural tube defects good what else it is increase in which other condition genetic uh, condition um, in trisomy 21 trisomy 21 so down syndrome it is increased in down syndrome babies so it is basically nt scan is a screening scan for down syndrome which is done in all women between 11 to 14 weeks okay so dating scan is done for all women and nt scan is done for all women between 11 to 14 weeks when is the dating scan done between 8 to 12 weeks and nt scan between 11 to 14 weeks okay continue she had history of nausea and vomiting in a first trimester and history of increased frequency of menstruation and thirst and she had history of fatigue breast discomfort there was no history of bleeding or discharge in per vagina there was no history of fever with rash uh, she was not exposed to radiations and she was not a, she, she was not taking any drug her routine investigations of blood and urine were done and were said to be normal okay two questions i'll ask you here one is uh, when you ask history of fever and rash what are you thinking of uh for any infections like rubella or okay, rubella, chicken okay, pox that's... okay uh, which may um uh, which may later like varicella yes you are correct rubella and varicella we are concerned about why rubella why varicella rubella what what are we worried about if she has rubella in pregnancy Uh, uh, Will be worried or not? Rubella. Yes, yes. Congenital, congenital rubella, rubella syndrome. Okay, mm. so rubella, remember, is a complete teratogen. Okay, so if a woman is infected with rubella in the first trimester, ninety percent risk is there that the baby will have congenital rubella yes. syndrome. Okay, 
Okay, so someone is asking, Ranjit, what is the cause of nausea and vomiting in pregnancy? Can you tell us, Navyashree, what is the cause of nausea and vomiting in pregnancy? Oh, nausea and vomiting is a physiological change in the pregnancy. Why does it happen? Uh, why? Morning sickness. Why? Why? So he's asking why. Oh, and oh, there might be endocrine. Okay, which, which, what endocrine cause? What is the hormone in pregnancy? Progesterone. And? After progesterone, what takes over? Once the placenta starts forming, what takes over? Beta oh, HCG. Beta okay, so beta HCG, HCG increase in beta HCG levels causes increased nausea and vomiting in pregnancy. That is why in multiple pregnancy and in molar pregnancy, where the beta HCG levels are higher, these women will have a higher incidence of nausea and vomiting in pregnancy and hyper MS is gravidarum. Okay, second question. Routine investigations of blood and urine were done. What do you mean by routine investigations? Which routine investigations do you, do you think were done? Uh, CBC for complete. In the first trimester. Okay, uh, so CBC was done. CBC, what all will we check? Uh, hemoglobin, hematocrit, okay. Okay. Uh, uh, LFT. Sorry, ma'am. Sorry, ma'am. Uh, hemoglobin, hematocrit. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, total leukocyte count, differential yes. leukocyte count. Okay, so we're mainly worried about hemoglobin. That's the main thing we want to look in the CBC because we're worried about anemia. What anemia. else? What are the blood tests? Uh, then uh, blood crossing, uh, blood grouping for Rh yes. typing. Yes, and, good. Uh, then uh, what else? Cross matching uh, yes. for giving so blood. grouping and Rh typing is done. We need to know the blood group. Why should we know, why should we know the blood group of the patient and Rh uh, type? Rh incompatibility. Uh, if... Uh, mm -hmm. Pregnant woman is negative and uh, yeah. uh, her husband is positive. And if baby okay. is uh, positive, then uh, okay. baby will be born with the erythroblastosis fetalis. Okay, so that is one reason. And we should also know the blood group because suppose she comes in labor and we don't know her blood group and she has postpartum hemorrhage. We won't start running around to look for her blood group at that time. So we should always have the blood group and RH type of the patient in the first visit. So we don't have problems later on in case of an emergency situation. So you said hemoglobin, blood group, what else? Routine investigations? Total leukocyte count. Okay, that is part of CBC. Other than that? Uh, urine, uh, urine analysis includes... Urine uh, routine plasma. microscopy. Okay, what else? Uh, then... Basically, in first trimester, only these. Only these. Are you sure? Anything else? Nothing else is done? If anyone RSV wants to contribute, LFT. you can write in the chat box or you can, um, so we can uh, discuss. So we do a hemoglobin, we do a blood group, RS typing, we do a urine routine is what she said. Anything else we look for? So whenever a woman comes to us who is pregnant, we look for, when we do screening thyroid for blood tests. Okay, so Yashaswini has said PPBS and FPS and you are saying thyroid. Okay, so both of you are right. So India is an endemic area for uh, goiter, right? For hypothyroidism. So routinely we now screen, the Indian guidelines do say we have to do TSH screening for all pregnant women in the first trimester because hypothyroidism is associated with poor maternal and fetal outcome. So TSH we do for all pregnant women in the first trimester. And Yashaswani has said FPS and PPBS also. Yes, you are right. We don't do a PPBS, but we do a, either an FPS or an RBS or a HbA1c. Why do we do this? Uh, for uh, diabetic uh, women. Uh, for, yes. So women who are pre-gestational, that is over diabetic. She, she, we do not know. Maybe she's diabetic and this is the first time we're getting an opportunity to test her. So we're looking for over diabetes or pre-gestational diabetes. When do we look for GDM? Gestational diabetes, when will we look for? At what gestational age? Oh, any time. Uh, it may be any time during the pregnancy. Uh, GDM. When, uh, patient present with us. I'm talking GDM. about GDM, gestational yeah. diabetes. Gestational no diabetes. So GDM typically presents when? After? Ranjit has given the correct answer. After 20 weeks. Okay, so after 20 weeks at the time, we look for, we test for GDM. And how do we test for GDM? Uh, random so there are two shows. types of diabetes. One is pre-gestational diabetes. That is the woman is already diabetic and she becomes pregnant. And the second is GDM, that is she's gestational diabetic, the diabetes develops in pregnancy. So 
pre-gestational we check for in the first trimester when as soon as she comes to us and for gdm we test in the second trimester between 24 to 28 weeks and what test do we do because i'm getting lots of responses on the chat box yes dipsy dipsy is the name of the organization what is the name of the test diabetes in pregnancy society is dipsy what did they say which test should we do neharika we should do a 75 gram OGTT, a 75 gram oral glucose tolerance test between 24 to 28 weeks. Okay, so what, what all tests have we discussed? One is hemoglobin, one is blood grouping, one is DSH, one is urine, correct me, Harika, one is urine routine microscopy, one is FBS, RBS, or HbA1c. What else? We're still missing some two more important Sex tests. Oh, sexually transmitted diseases. Yes, so infections which are at risk of her giving vertical transmission to the baby. So HIV, yes. What else? Uh, syphilis, VDRL. Yes, VDRL. And one more? Uh, hepatitis B. B. So HIV, hepatitis B, VDRL are tested routinely in all women because there is a risk of vertical transmission to the fetus. And syphilis in pregnancy otherwise also has poor perinatal outcome. One last test, routine test we do in pregnancy. You said urine routine microscopy. Any other urine test we do? Uh, urine creatinine. And urine? Diuria. No, no. A routine test. The, so in pregnancy, very common is asymptomatic bacteriuria. So we do a urine culture and sensitivity. sensitivity. Okay, what does that tell us? If the woman may not be symptomatic, but she may be carrying bacteria, she may be having an asymptomatic bacteriuria, which can later on cause complications. So we do a urine culture in every trimester because asymptomatic bacteriuria can be very common. Okay, so I hope you've understood these tests. I will repeat, these are very important. You should know which routine tests are run in pregnancy. I will repeat, we do CBC, we do or mainly hemoglobin, we do blood grouping, we do uh, uh, testing for over diabetes by RBS, FPS, and HPA1 or HPA1C. We do a thyroid screening uh, by doing a TSH. We che check for infections, HIV, HPS, and VDRL, and we check for do a urine routine and a urine culture. So these are routine tests which are done in pregnancy. Please remember some books will say we do torch, we do other things, but these are not routine tests. They are not done in all women. They are done. These are done only if there is a specific indication. The routine tests which we do are these. Also, one more test which you can add to this is to take a pap smear. So pregnant woman is the ideal opportunity to actually take a pap smear for her because otherwise women in India don't routinely come to hospital. And CA cervix is very common. So pap smear can be added to the list of routine investigations. Okay. Yes, okay, and Shreya is saying anomaly test. Anomaly test is what is anomaly test? Anomaly, anomaly test is done at fifth month. In the fifth month, it's called an anomaly scan. We will reach the second trimester. Okay, carry on, uh, Navishri. Next second trimester. Uh, second trimester quickening was felt at uh, eighteen weeks, and a uh, TT dose, dose of TT second dose was given at sixteen weeks. Folic acid supplements were continued. Iron and um, calcium tablets were started. Anomaly scan was done at 20 weeks and it was said to be normal. It assessed okay. the placental position, level of okay. the placenta and uh, <laughs> congenital anomalies in the baby. Okay. Can I ask you some questions? I hope I'm not <laughs> asking, questioning you too much. If you feel I'm questioning you too much, you can <laughs> say, okay, ma'am, um, uh, that's enough. <laughs> okay, so... Um, what, when you say quickening, what do you mean by quickening? Okay, okay. No, you're doing very well. Fetal movements. Okay. Appreciation of first of fetal, fetal movement. movements. Okay. Why is it important? Um, now she's 40 weeks. How does it matter when she first felt fetal movements? Amniotic fluid uh, content. Whether now she's 40 is... weeks. How does it matter when she felt fetal movements? How does it matter how much the amniotic fluid was? Anomaly scan you said was normal. Why is quickening important? Um, breathing. If a baby is breathing properly. or 
she's 40 weeks now all that would have been seen by now on ultrasound so many ultrasounds were done why quickening and breathing has nothing to do with quickening quickening is the first perception of fetal movement because the baby is now large enough so we can feel when do we normally when does a woman feel quickening you normally if the pregnant is multigravidous she feels it at 15 in a primary gravida and it is a little later if around 20 weeks primary, she feels yes at, and the uh, multi they usually feel quickening earlier because yes, they know they know how the movement feels they have they are experienced but quickening is important because it helps us confirm the dates again it helps us confirm with dating of the pregnancy see a pregnancy is a very special time for a woman okay she may not remember her lmp but she will remember especially if she's a primary gravida she'll remember the date when she first felt her baby move okay and i'm telling you because when i was pregnant i still remember the date when my baby first moved it is that special a moment so most women will remember roughly approximate date she will remember so that is that will help you confirm the dating because we know quickening is usually felt between 16 to 18 weeks in a multi and between 18 to 20 weeks in a primary so it helps determine the dating of the pregnancy especially if she doesn't have any ultrasounds many patients come to us at term and they have they're completely unbooked they have no dating nothing they don't remember their lmp then these small small points help when did she first feel quickening okay so that's why quickening is important okay understood am i clear navishri i think your uh, connection is not good I'm sorry, ma'am. There was a disturbance. It's okay. So I hope that's clear. Quickening. Yes, ma'am. Okay. The second question I want to ask before we move on is: You said tetanus second dose was given. Can you tell us what immunization in pregnancy is given routinely in, in Indian women? Ah, uh, that is tetanus. It is given when a uh, uh, pregnant lady when she comes for her first visit. Uh, okay. Ah, uh, it or uh, two doses are given. First dose is ah uh, given at a time, and after uh, four weeks apart, second dose. Okay, do we give tetanus toxoid or has the government of India now changed the guideline? Okay. Okay. So some people are replying. Yes, we give TD. We give TD tetanus and diphtheria. We give. We don't give now plain tetanus toxoid. In two thousand and eighteen, I think the government of India changed the guidelines. Now we give TD. Okay, tetanus and diphtheria is given. The first dose, you are you are right. We give it as as early as possible when the woman first comes to us, and the second dose is given after four okay. weeks. Okay, and the American guidelines ACOG actually says the second dose of TD should be replaced by TDAP, that is tetanus, diphtheria, and pertussis, and should be given in the third trimester. Okay, so many. private practitioners this has not been uh, uh, accepted by the government of india but many people are giving now td as the first dose and tdap as the second dose because this also gives protection to the fetus if you give it in the third trimester it protects the fetus against pertussis okay so td remember two doses by the government of india and td followed by tdap is also followed in many places okay also what other vaccines are given in pregnancy of uh, um the vaccines of influenza and uh, it can be given yes what else um, uh, then uh, for rubella can we give covid so, can we give covid vaccine uh, in ma'am covid vaccine yes. so that is also you should in, you should start including patient is vaccinated against covid in your histories now okay because you are students of covid time okay this is going to become a very important part of history taking and we are asking our patients routinely in the nc whether they are vaccinated or not if they are not vaccinated you have to encourage them to take the vaccine because it is safe whatever studies we have till now it is all the types of vaccines available are safe in pregnancy and should be encouraged because covid in pregnancy can have severe complications okay so it is better to get them vaccine so always include now in your histories this is for everybody please start including covid vaccination also their status of covid vaccination okay yes ma'am continue uh, there is no history of headache nausea vomiting blurring of vision epigastric pain palpitations and pedal edema 
um, there is no excessive weight gain, excessive hunger and thirst, increased frequency of maturation and fatigability. There is no history of burning maturation, bleeding or leaking per vagina. The routine investigations of blood and urine were done and were found to be normal. Okay, so again, I will ask you, routine investigations of blood and urine were done and found to be normal in second trimester, what do we do routinely? I already told you, but tell me, what do we do in second trimester? Um, um, uh, the uh, CBC, hemoglobin, hematocrit. Okay. okay, we repeat hemoglobin in each trimester. Good, okay then. Um, I just told you, how do we check for GDM? Uh, HP1 AC or uh, HP A1C. No, no, HP A1C is first trimester. Sorry, we do a uh, uh, GTT. 75. Yes, very good. We do a 75 gram OGTT between 24 to 28 weeks. I will again make this point clear. In the first trimester, we check for patients who may be having over diabetes. That means they're already diabetic and they come to you and they don't know whether they're diabetic or not. We test for that for all patients in the first trimester. Then again, we do a 75 gram OGTT between 24 to 28 weeks to check for gestational diabetes mellitus because GDM onset happens after 20 weeks. So that is when the placenta starts maturing and the incidence of GDM increases after 20 weeks. Before 20 weeks, we check, to check for over diabetes and we do a FPS, a RBS or a HPA1C. But in the second trimester, 24 to 28 weeks, we do a 75 gram OGTT. Okay. And one more test we do routinely is urine culture and sensitivity. So in the second trimester, hemoglobin, urine culture, again to look for asymptomatic bacteria and we check check for GDM. Okay, am I clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay, next. At third trimester, uh, patient continued to, sorry, pre, women continued to uh, perceive fetal movements. Iron and calcium tablets were continued. Uh, internal growth scan was done and was said to be normal. History of exertion, breathlessness um, were felt. Uh, there was no history of nausea, vomiting, blurring of vision, epigastric pain, pedal edema. There was no history of weight gain, excessive hunger, thirst, and increased frequency of mixturation or fatigability. There was no history of uh, burning mixturation. Uh, there was no history of bleeding or leaking per vagina. Routine investigations of blood and urine well done and we're found to be normal okay so somebody has asked on the chat what is the dose of iron folic acid tablets can you answer this question yes ma'am uh, folic acid uh, 4 mg um, uh, bod once a day uh, and uh, uh, iron is 100 mg and calcium uh, 500 to 1000 mg Okay, so uh, I will uh, clarify that a little further. Ranjit, uh, it, nowadays the government is running the program called Anemia Mukt Bharat, AMB, Anemia Mukt Bharat. That is, so in, and as per Anemia Mukt Bharat, they are saying that every pregnant woman should be given one tablet. This is for prophylaxis, not treatment. Prophylaxis is one tablet starting from the 14th week and daily one tablet should be given for 180 days and then continue postpartum again for 180 days. Okay, so each tablet, it's a red color tablet, each tablet contains 60 milligram of iron and 500 micrograms, that is 0.5 milligram of folic acid. Okay, so the olden iron tablets were 100 milligram, but the new tablets provided by the Anemia Mukt Bharat campaign contain 60 milligram of iron with 0.5 milligram of folic acid. And calcium, you are right, has to be taken as 500 milligram BD. Ideally, the dose is 1000 milligram per day. So 500 milligram BD has to be taken. Okay. Um, so in this, right. Okay, continue. Obstetric history. Uh, she was married since one year. Non-consanguineous type of marriage. Her obstetric score is given. She is primary gravida. Uh, menstrual history. Menarche was at the age of 14. And uh, past menstrual cycles were regular of 28 days. And du uh, duration of flow was 3 to 5 days. Uh, with uh, 2 to 3 fully soaked pads per day. Uh, it was associated with dysmenorrhea and clots. Last menstrual period was... Uh, 3rd July 2021 and the expected date of delivery is 10th um, May 2022.
10th April. Okay, so tell me how you calculated the estimated date of delivery. Nikhil's formula, uh, plus 7 minus 12, uh, minus 3. No, no, tell me again. Uh, plus 7 minus 3. Or, what, plus uh, 7 minus 3? Plus 7 days, uh, minus 3 months. Okay, or plus 9 months and nine. 7 days. Okay, so basically you calculated by adding... Nine months and seven days to the last menstrual period, or subtracting three months and adding seven days. This is called as Negeli's formula. So now I'll ask you two questions. Suppose she was an IVF pregnancy. These days, IVF pregnancies are very common. Then how will you calculate the EDD? And number two, suppose her. Okay, let us answer this question. Uh, uh, from the time of uh, uh, insertion of. Moral, I mean, black zygote. That is called embryo transfer. Okay. When we insert, so whenever a patient undergoes IVF, she is given, she remembers the date of the embryo transfer. Okay. From that date, how do we calculate? I'm not very sure. Okay. So, we, so the LMP is not very accurate because in IVF pregnancies, because after that, lots of stimulation is given, gonadotropins are given to stimulate the ovaries. But we are very sure that of the date of embryo transfer. So the embryo transfer plus 38 weeks gives us the estimated date of delivery. Okay, so what do you do? You simply use Nagali's formula, calculate it using Nagali's formula, using the date of the ET and then subtract two weeks. Okay. So suppose her ET was on 3rd July. Okay, so you calculate the ETD as per Nagali's 10th April and then subtract two weeks from 10th April. Okay, so normally the ETD falls at 40 weeks. But following ET embryo transfer, we add 38 weeks. That means you calculate as per Nagali's rule and then subtract two weeks. You calculate using the date of the embryo transfer. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Okay, next, next, uh, continue. Past history, uh, there was no history of hypertension, diabetes, mellitus, or thyroid disorders. There was no history of asthma or tuberculosis, epilepsy or jaundice, and no history of blood transfusions in the past, no history of surgeries in the past. Um, her family history was not significant. Her uh, personal history, uh, she consumed mixed diet with good appetite. Her bowel and bladder movements were regular. Uh, she had sound sleep with no addictive habits. Very important if you get time in the exam, especially if you get a patient with fetal growth restriction or a patient who is malnourished, it is always better to calculate the her daily calorie intake. Okay, so if this is if you get time, many times you are short of time, you don't have time, but especially if you get patients with fetal growth restriction or she herself is malnourished, her BMI is less, or an anemic patient. You need to calculate, and even in a diabetic patient, okay, because you need to calculate the total calorie intake that they're having, okay, whether, whether it's less or appropriate, or in case of diabetes, it should not be more than what should, should, should she be consuming every day, okay. Continue. Gender physical examination, uh, verbal consent of a patient was taken. Uh, 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 Women was conscious, cooperative, well-oriented to time, and, uh, time, place, and person. Examination was done under adequate exposure of light. She was moderately built and moderate, moderately nourished. Her anthropometric calculations, her height was 155 centimeter, and her pre-pregnancy weight was 48 weeks, 48 kg, and her present pregnancy weight is 62 kg. Her BMI is 21.33 kg per meter square. Is this a normal weight gain for her for her or is it less or is it more? What is the oh, weight gain? 9 to 12. To 9 to 12. To, okay, 48 to 62 means how much weight she's gained? She's gained? She's gained 14, 14, 14 kg. kg. Okay, so is this more or less or appropriate for her BMI? This is more, ma'am. For her BMI? Her BMI is calculated according it to the pregnancy it, weight. Yes, so so uh, as per BMI, the weight gain is slightly on the higher side. You are right. So as per BMI, 
the weight gain changes. So if her BMI, if she was underweight, if, if her BMI was say 18 or 17, then this much weight gain is appropriate. But if her BMI was 30, then this much weight gain is more. Okay, so based on the BMI, the weight gain, but average we do say between 9 to 12 kg is the average weight gain for an average BMI. Okay, continue. Um, head to toe examination, uh, charisma was seen over forehead and cheek. There was no pallor, icterus, sinusis, clubbing, lymphadenopathy, pedal edema. Breast, spine, and thyroid were normal. Uh, okay. Wilding. So, uh, okay. So basically, um, um, can you just hold on for one minute? Please just hold yes, on. Okay, sorry. So basically, um, uh, yeah, so I was saying what amongst this pallor, ictus, cyanosis, clubbing, lymphadenopathy, pedal edema, pickle, we call this pickle, na, which is the most important for pregnancy? Pallor is most important. What else? Uh, and ictus is also? Most important, two most important. My question is two most pedal important. Pedal edema. Yes, pallor and pedal edema. Okay, the rest, even if you miss out, Okay, it doesn't matter because when will you see clubbing in pregnancy? Pregnancy is unless she is a case of chronic uh, uh, COPD or un unless she is a case of some heart disease in pregnancy, then only you need to look for cyanosis and clubbing. Okay, the rest are not very, very important. Okay, but pallor and edema you should not miss. Okay, pallor and edema are very, very important. Okay, and breast thyroid are also important to check you should not miss a, miss a breast examination should not miss a thyroid examination why is breast important um uh, if there is any uh, cracks or breast carcinomas was mostly then um, if if at all okay Breast cancer, cracks, what else? What are we, What is the most important thing we are looking for? Sanjay is right. We are looking for? Inverted nipple. Inverted nipple. Because it is when the, if we detect this antenatally, we can correct this antenatally. We don't have to, we don't want the baby to have difficulty feeding and this should be detected antenatally and corrected. How can we correct inverted nipple in the antepartum period? Traction is applied and the how is how anyone can answer this. How do we correct inverted nipple? Yes, it's called Sanjay's right. It's called a syringe method. So we cut off the top of a syringe and then we using we put put the end of the syringe on the nipple and create negative pressure. So that suctions out the inverted nipple. Okay, so this has to be corrected in the antepartum period itself. Okay, continue. Uh, vital examination. Her pulse were 78 beats per minute, uh, which were regular in rate and rhythm, normal in volume, character, and condition of the vessel wall. Respiratory rate were 16, per cy 16 cycles per minute. Blood pressure was 120 by 80 mm of Hg in her right hand, uh, measured in sitting position. Uh, temperature was a febrile. Okay. Systemic examination, uh, respiratory system, normal vascular breath sounds were heard, cardiovascular system, S1 and S2 were heard and were normal, no murmurs were heard, uh, central nervous system, patient was conscious and oh, well oriented. Mm. Per abdominal examination, uh, patient asked to avoid, her, avoid urine and after a verbal consent, uh, she was well exposed from zippy sternum to pubic symphysis for inspection. Uh, shape of the abdomen was globular, longitudinally distended. Umbilicus was centrally placed and diverted. Linea nigra and stria gravidevirum are present. Uh, there was no scars, pulsations, or engorged veins. Corneal orifices were intact. 
on palpation abdomen was centralized um abdomen was relaxed with the flanks full and fundal height was 34 weeks symphysio fundal height was 34 weeks with full flanks corresponding to 40 weeks of gestational age and her abdominal girth was 96 cm at the level of umbilicus okay one question here uh, so you said go back okay so you said the fundal height was 34 weeks that means what um 34 weeks uh, um based on your measure the fundal weight is fundal height is always correspond to uh, gestational age um so by 34 weeks what 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 do you mean how did you do this can you explain a little bit more how did you arrive at this um, from the fifth sternum to um, pubic symphysis we start we coming down with our hand correct and then um, so where did you feel resistance to say it is 34 weeks where did you feel resistance in the upper quad uh, there we have divided uh, yeah, so how have you divided with this sternum into three quadrants um, the first upper quadrant from the umbilicus indicates 24 weeks and uh, at the umbilicus 24 weeks above yeah. the umbilicus 28 weeks and yeah. above that 30 And thirty four, thirty six is at the fifth sternum. Okay, actually, uh, at the upper border of the umbilicus, you are right. It is twenty four weeks, and at the fifth sternum, it is thirty six weeks. weeks. In between, we have two demarcations at equal length, eight weeks and thirty two weeks. Okay, so it is twenty four weeks, twenty eight weeks, thirty two weeks, and thirty six weeks at four week gaps, right? and at term the uterus falls forward to 32 weeks and the flanks become full okay yes ma'am are you there yes ma'am yes ma'am yeah okay so uh, i think my my connection is not stable okay so basically when you say 34 weeks that means the uterus must be between 32 weeks and the between 28 weeks and 32 weeks right and 32 weeks right yes ma'am Okay, and symphysis of fundal height. Why did you take? Uh, symphysis of fundal height. What is the importance of symphysis of fundal height? Oh, uh, it gives us the uh, length of the baby uterus. So, how does that help us? Um, At forty weeks, how does that it, help? Whether head is engaged or not. How does the symphysis of fundal height tell us if the head is engaged or not? Okay, so when should we measure the symphysis of fundal height? Between anyone can tell me when. So the symphysis of fundal height in centimeters corresponds to the period of gestation. But when does this happen? Only up to thirty-six weeks. Yes. So from sixteen. Uh -huh. Sixteen weeks. Some books say twenty weeks. Twenty weeks to thirty-six weeks is when the symphysis of fundal height in centimeters will correspond to the period of gestation. So, at forty weeks, why are you taking the symphysis of fundal height? I was not aware. No, you you can still answer me if you know the correct answer. You can say okay. You can justify your answer. How can you justify your answer? Anyone? Why? At S, which taken at forty weeks, along with another measurement, that is the abdominal girth. What can it tell us? Whether flanks are full or not, and you can see if the flanks are full. Why are we taking a measurement? Asha, why did you take abdominal girth then? What is the purpose of taking abdominal girth? Ninety-six centimeters you have written. Sanjay Singh Polly has given us no. What is the reason why she has taken SFH and abdominal girth? Using some formulas, we can calculate what. Uh, uh, Johnson's Johnson's formula. Yes, we can use. Uh, we can calculate. So before ultrasound, we used to use these methods only to calculate the estimated fetal weight. There are several formulas available. Yes, so if fetal weight is how we is what we use. So even at term, by using the symphysis of fundal height and the abdominal girth. Formulas, which I won't go into details. You can read about them to calculate the estimated 
weight okay otherwise in facial fundal height for the purpose of diagnosing iugr is only done between 16 weeks to 36 weeks okay okay suppose this patient um uh, the uterus i palpate and i find it is only 28 weeks what will i think of intrauterine growth retardation oligohyaluronemia oligohyaluronemia do what else or uh, congenital anomalies if any okay what else common things tell me first iugr oligohydramnios anything else wrong dates ranjit good wrong dates what else i have not yet auscultated i'm giving you a clue i have i am yet to auscultate what else what what else could it be still birth could be an intrauterine fetal demise okay or a fetal demise so it could be a dead baby that is causing the uterus to be less than the period of gestation so oligohydramnios iugr fetal demise and wrong dates are reasons why the uterine height is less than the period of gestation examined her she is term and i find the uterus is at the zephy sternum what will i think of um she's the uh, macro yeah. macrosomia good what else diabetic mother so macrosomia of diabetes means macrosomia what else Uh, polyhydramnios. Polyhydramnios, good. What else? Uh, Cephalopelvic uh, disproportion. Why CPT? Uterus is now overdistended. It is more than the period of gestation. So what would we think of? You are right. Polyhydramnios and macrosomia. What else? Again, wrong dates. Maybe your dating is wrong. What else? Anyone? Maybe it's multiple pregnancy. Maybe it's a twin pregnancy. Okay. Yes. 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 Many right twins or multiple triplets. You never. Sometimes on ultrasounds also twins are missed. What else? One more I want. Not very common, but common enough. Something else in the uterus which is pushing the baby up. What else? Uh, your adnexal or uterine mass. Lower yes. So commonest at uh, commonest uterine mass is a fibroid. So a large fibroid. may be causing the uterus to the period of gestation right so this is very important this question causes of the uterine height less causes of uh, the uterus to be less than the period of gestation and period of gestation okay continue Aus auscultation no no wait grips are Sorry, left ha of huh. uh, uh, grip grips fundal grip soft broad irregular mass suggestive of breach uh, lateral grip uh, left lateral grip soft curved resistance suggestive of spine right lateral grip small irregular knob like structures suggestive of limbs um, pelvic grip first pelvic grip symphysio sorry ma'am sinciput uh, was palpable with difficulty occiput was not palpable and pelvic second pelvic grip um, divergence of fingers suggested of uh, not engaged head i'm sorry ma'am just the head is engaged. engaged okay okay so what are the so why are these grips important Grips Number one, what do they tell us? Tell me, what do they tell us? How do they help? They are very, very, very important. But can you tell me? Can you make it very simple and tell us? Presentation of yes. the babies. So, so number one, we we can know the number of fetuses. Whether there is one or two or three, that helps us in the number of fetuses. Number two, the lie of the fetus. Very good. Okay. Whether it is longitudinal lie or transverse lie, that we can tell by the grips. What else? You are right. The presentation. What do you mean by what is the definition of lie? What is the definition of presentation? A uh, lie is the longitudinal axis of the baby uh, to the uh, centralized uh, longitudinal ac uh, axis of the uterus. Yes. Or and the maternal spine. Okay. And presentation? A uh, presentation is the uh, fetal part. Yes. Which is occupying the. Lower pole of the uterus. Yes, very good. So these grips help us tell because now she is forty weeks. So our management now will be to deliver plan the... her delivery, right? That's why she is admitted. Now these things will help us tell how to plan her delivery. Okay, continue. 
on auscultation petal heart sounds were uh, heard on the left side below the umbilicus 144 beats per minute provisional diagnosis a booked case of 24 year old primary gravida uh, mrs abc from kajuba karwa belong to uh, class 2 Socio economic status according to modified DG Prasad's classification. She is a die card holder. Um, she was primary gravida. Um, this is wrong. This is G P1 is wrong here. It has to be she is G1. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Wrong. So it will be P0. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Then uh, 40 weeks of gestation uh, with single intrauterine fetus in a cephalic presentation, admitted for safe confinement, not in labor. Okay, so this provisional diagnosis is very, very important in obstetrics. The provisional diagnosis has to contain the most, most, most important points, okay, which will, which are relevant. Okay, so what are the important points in this is her age. Her age is very important, okay. Second important thing is her parity index or her obstetric score. She's a primary gravida. Third most important thing is her period of gestation, Fourth most important thing is whether there are any, whether there are any um, uh, anti antipartum complications. Okay, and fifth most important is her examination findings. What her examination findings are? Okay, you can add to here single live intrauterine fetus because people heart you've mentioned is there. So single live intrauterine fetus in cephalic presentation. Okay, so what other examination would you like to do for this patient? Um, Not as an undergraduate, suppose you are an intern or a postgraduate. What would you have done? In addition to all this, what should also be a part of your examination? Next year, when you are an intern, you will be expected to do this examination also per for vaginal. this patient. Yes, you have to do a per vaginal examination. Why? What will you determine by doing a PV examination for this Presenting patient? Presenting part of the... What else? Uh, cervical dilatation. Okay. And, uh, okay. So basically, she's 40 weeks now. She is going to plan. That's why you've admitted her. Now we need to determine what score will be determined by doing a PV examination. Determine. We will determine the bishop score. Have you heard of bishop score? Okay. Can you the bishop score is? And then we will end because I think it's one hour already. Score is a score done on a bimanual examination where we see the favor of the cervix. So this is homework for you. Navishri, go and read about bishop's score. All right. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, so I think we can end here. And um, uh, thank you so much for uh, inviting me to moderate this case. And you did a good job, Navishri. Thank you so much.